Hello everybody and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program where I have been doing a little bit of experimenting off camera here with the aerodynamics here. This is what I've come up with. It's not going to be perfect. I'll have to be careful as we launch it, but it should get the job done. And all I did really was duplicate this, move it up, essentially giving our first stage here a little bit more aerodynamic control as we go up. You can see here we'll be quite maneuverable, but not particularly stable. So we'll have to be careful as we're going up. Now, one thing I did realize, I don't have power on this thing. I feel like that's something we should have. So I'm just going to do some small photovoltaic panels on the exterior here. And I think I'm going to stack a battery right on top of each of these as well. Just a little uh, Z200 here. Or not a Z200, I guess a Z1K. I mean, that'll be nice battery power for the station for sure. So we'll go ahead and do that and we'll have no power issues if we do. And the real question is, does this thing have enough DV to do what we need it to do? The answer, I think, is yes. So let's go ahead and launch this, and hopefully I don't mess up the ascent profile, because it is a little bit spooky, I'm not gonna lie. I did a stress test on it off-camera, and, uh, yeah, it does like to lose attitude. There's no doubt about it, but we just gotta get it up once. That's all we gotta do here. <sighs> Okay, so let's turn SAS on, and I think we are just going to go ahead and say, here goes nothing. This is going to be a little spicy. There's no doubt about that one. Hmm. I'm going to change that. There we go. <laughs> We're going to go ahead and start a very, very gentle turn here. Very, very gentle. We need to get a lot of altitude here. I'm a little bit concerned about going too far. But I do want to get a little bit further over towards that prograde marker. That would be very, very nice. I'm very concerned about going too much further than this. We'll see how we're sitting. Right now, I'm pretty much just looking at the nav ball, nothing else. And just trying to get us over there very cautiously. Ooh, that's almost bad. Okay, we almost tipped there. But I think we're good. We'll just hold prograde. I'm cutting the engines. Just getting us some distance there. Okay, what's our apoapsis? Plenty. Our apoapsis is absolutely plenty. Okay, so we're going to do something along the lines of this at the apoapsis. There we go. I mean, it's not exactly perfect, but it will do. So we're going to try to head on over. In fact, I'm going to, right now, I'm going to ditch these nose cones. There we go. We'll get rid of those. We no longer need them. We are now in space. We're going to extend our solar panels while we head over towards the maneuver node. It's a 45 second burn, so we want to burn this at T minus, what is that? 22 and a half seconds is when we want to burn that. Okay, and this will be absolutely fine. And we absolutely needed the second set of tail fins because this is such a heavy, like such a top heavy payload. So we're just heading over towards that node for right now. Okay, freezing physics there. 22 and a half seconds is when we want to do this burn. So let's get in position for that. And we will burn this. I just now noticed this. Is that a warp to maneuver button? How did I not know that existed? Right there. I think that's what that was. It it faded out when we passed where it would warp to maneuver. If that's the case, then I'm an idiot and I don't know how I never noticed that before. <laughs> okay, so we don't really care about what this orbit ends up looking like. We just want to get into orbit. This orbit is largely irrelevant to us. And then we'll use the remainder of the fuel in this stage 
for getting out to the moon. I'm very concerned about this, DB. Very concerned about that. I thought it'd be a little higher. No, absolutely not. Okay, we're gonna save this 40 meters per second. This is fine. This is absolutely fine. We are gonna be pretty short on Delta V here. I'm pretty sure. It's gonna be interesting. We're gonna need to get to the moon as efficiently as possible. So we're gonna need to get out somewhere over, a little further than this probably, over here. Yes. A minimal DV burn to get a moon encounter. Okay. Even that is a lot of our thrust. This might be needing more fuel. Which is something we could do. For sure. We'll give it a go and see if we can pull it off. We might be able to. Maybe. It's going to be really tight. If we have to, we'll just abandon it and we will strap on a few extra T-400s. So we're going to head on over towards this position. We need to use every ounce of fuel we have. I should have looked at how much fuel was in that upper stage, how much DV that was. It's uh, not much, shall we say. We're going to be burning most of our remaining DV on just getting to the moon. I don't think this is going to be enough, in all honesty. And actually, I want to test this. Yeah, that's just a warp to maneuver button. How did I not know that was there? <laughs> Insane. Absolutely bonkers. So we want to begin this burn at, let's see here, 30 plus 18, so 48 seconds. I really, really don't think this is enough. That said, we could send a refueling mission to this. That's an option. And a pretty decent one at that. And off we go. Yeah, I think a refueling mission is not a terrible idea for this. We need to make ourselves a bit of a fuel tug anyway. So that's something that we could definitely do. I'm going to go ahead and physics warp this burn for a little bit. This is going to be a pretty long one. And there are definitely some... Whoa, that's very responsive in physics warp. There are definitely some things that I would like to do in this episode, so I want to make that burn a little shorter. That is very responsive, physics work. I definitely expected this T-400 to get us a little further than this, with all of these tanks completely empty, but that's okay. That is A-OK. -okay. okay, we're just going to watch this, and the moment we get any sort of an encounter, we're going to stop. We want to get trapped by the moon here. Okay, that's good. How much DV is this going to take? Probably too much. Yeah, that's going to be too much. We can use our monoprop as well. Let's see if we can get captured by the moon. I hope that we can. If we can't, we may have to untrack this and send it up with more fuel. <laughs> but if we can, then we can do a refueling mission. Or we can try to dock with monoprop if we think we have enough of that. So this is going to be a pure retrograde burn. And I mean, we're going to need a lot of DV to make this happen out of our monoprop. We could definitely do a refuel, though. I think that's not a terrible concept. So for now, let's go ahead and burn this in, I mean, 24 seconds, but really any time right now is fine. I'm going to turn on RCS. And we are going to continue. No, we want to burn not that way. We want to burn this way. There we go. We're going to burn this way with our RCS and see what we can get. But I don't think that this is going to be very effective at all. Yeah, look how slow that is. 
<laughs> We're tearing through the monoprop a bit. I'm going to go ahead and physics warp this. We're going to physics warp that at 4x. We're definitely going to tear through the monoprop here, and I don't think that this is going to be enough. Yeah, I'm deeply concerned about this. What What's our final orbit going to end up looking like? I mean, we could send a refueling mission to that. That is an option. I'm going to continue burning off all of the monoprop for now. But this is definitely going to be interesting. We're not going to have enough, but this is not necessarily a shock. Like I said, we need to send up a fuel tug anyway. So maybe this is a good time for that. Because we need a fuel storage module for our station, which it can store some fuel, but not enough, really. So we're out of monoprop. We're going to head back to the space center for right now. And that is going to escape from the moon. That's okay. We will accept that. And we're definitely going to send up some additional fuel. So let's go into the VAB. And what is this going to end up looking like? Well, we need just a large amount of fuel storage. And so we're going to put in, once again, a Probodobodyne Octo 2. This is going to be unmanned. And we're going to put in, say, I mean, let's just go for Jumbo 64s. We're going to put in two of these. The top one is going to be empty. The bottom one is going to be at half capacity. Like that. I'm also going to put in a 2.5k rechargeable battery bank, bank, like that. And we're going to need a docking port on this up top, ideally. So we'll go ahead and put in a docking port up here, which of course is in coupling. There we go. Lampatron docking port there. I'm also going to put in a couple of docking ports down here and a couple of docking ports up here just for extensibility, in case we want to dock something up to this module. And then we're going to put on a nice little poodle on here. There we go. And this has 834 meters per second in it, apparently. Okay. Uh, this is, this is actually way more than that in the Atmo, so that'll be fine. We're going to put in then something along the lines of a TD-25 decoupler. And then we're going to just put on a standard lifter here. Two full Rocket Max tanks, and we're going to put in the mainsail. How's that look for thrust to weight? 1.35. So I actually do think that we should heavy lift this. So we'll put in some decouplers, and then we will put in a Pollux, something along the lines of that, move that down like so, and then move this down like so. That should do the trick. And then we'll put some aerodynamic nose cones on here like so. Not, not that size. That size is incorrect. We want these aerodynamic nose cones. There we go, and then we'll have to strut this up. So literally the only purpose behind this thing is to be able to go on rescue missions, like the one that we're planning, and to act as a storage module for our fuel that we're going to create at this station. That's literally the only point. So we're going to do something along the lines of this. Now this is a pretty tall rocket. There's no doubt about that. I'm also going to put a fairing on it. It doesn't need to be a big fairing. So a 2.5 meter fairing, and it's going to be just a little guy. Like that. Excellent. Okay, now we probably want to have, once again, some solar panels on this. I'm only going to do two 1x6s. If I couple that. And where do we want to attach them? I think just up here is fine. I want it to be along this side, though. So maybe right there? 
I want it to be directly in line with the, the uh, plumbing, though. So something like that. That'll do. Okay, anything else that we need on this? Yes. Yes, there is. There are things that we need. So we're going to go ahead and take this out of there. And we're going to attach in an ASAS. In fact, we might want to go with a large one, considering the size of this and the weight when this is fully fueled. So we're going to go with a large reaction wheel like that. We are, of course, going to have to redo this fairing. And we're also going to need some RCS on here. And once again, since this is intended to be a storage module and a little bit of a tug, I think we're going to go ahead and put in a pretty big RCS tank. Uh, let's see here. This one is 750. Yes, this is the size that I want, actually. We're going to do something like that. And then we are going to put in, of course, some RCS thrusters here. I'm actually going to do eight because of the size and weight of this. We'll do something along the lines of that. And then we'll build this fairing to be something along the lines of this. Once again, it doesn't need to be a particularly large fairing. There, that'll do. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and launch this thing, but I want to double check the staging. The staging is all wrong. And that decouples, we'll do that, and then I'll I'll do the fairing manual. Perfect. We do not have a KER on this, and I don't feel like we need one. So we'll go ahead and save this as the fuel tug. And actually, I think we can maybe get a little bit less weight in this fairing if we were to extend it up like this and bring it in kind of like that. I don't know that that's less weight, actually. Anyway, let's go ahead and save this. We need to look at the aerodynamics. The aerodynamics are probably going to be pretty awful on this. Because these tanks are empty, I, it should be reasonably okay. Let's do tail fins on here, and like that, and only four of them for now. Nope, only four of them. There we go. We'll, we'll slot, slot these in here, and I want that aerodynamic overlay. This is going to be very stable. We would need to move this up like this. I think because of the weight of this, we may want to do the same thing we did before, and have something along the lines of that. Basically the same lifter, just a different payload. This is a much taller rocket, for sure. But let's go ahead and save that, and let's give this a aerodynamic test. Let's see how that goes. Hopefully it goes okay. This is a test flight, so we are okay with reversion. And we'll go ahead and throttle up, and up we go. Good speed off the pad. Definitely good speed off the pad. I like it. We're at 100 meters per second. Let's test those aerodynamics. We're going to be a little bit overzealous on this. In fact, let's just stress test it. Okay. Surprisingly good. That was actually better than I expected. In terms of aerodynamic ability. Yeah, this is surprisingly good. Like, it's awful, right? This is a terrible ascent profile, but we're stress testing the aerodynamics. That's what's happening here. So we're going to revert that just to the launch, and we're going to do a real launch of this. The aerodynamics work. We will accept that. Okay, so we're going to do a real launch here, which of course means I'm not going to go quite as insane with the, with the turning. I just wanted to see how uh, controllable it was in the atmosphere, and it was reasonably controllable. Okay, we're gonna very slowly make our way over. And as far as actually rendezvousing with the existing ore storage module, that's gonna be interesting for sure. There's no doubt about that one. Okay. So up we go here. We're getting some pretty good speed and a bit of inclination in there as well. I don't particularly care for. 
We're just making our way slowly, slowly over towards that prograde marker. Now we're doing pretty well as far as speed goes here. I like it. And our aerodynamics are suiting me absolutely perfectly. Sometimes you just gotta test it to the point of failure. We'll just lock to prograde for now. How's our apoapsis looking? Okay. Take that up to about 90. Okay. We'll detach the SRBs, get a little bit more distance there. And let's go ahead and create our maneuver here. We'll position it right about here should be fine. I don't actually care about the ultimate orbit here. As soon as we hit 50 kilometers, we'll ditch the fairing. And we're just heading on over towards that marker. Ditching the fairing now. And it all looks good. We're going to be exiting the atmosphere shortly. Just try to hold at the marker here if we can. You may overshoot it a little bit, but it looks good. Yeah, definitely looks good. And we are out of the atmosphere. Fantastic. Let's get our two tiny little solar panels extended. There we go. Excellent. This is a 54 second burn, so T minus 29 seconds. Let's go ahead and warp to that. And we are going to overshoot it slightly, but that's fine. I don't ultimately care. We were slightly off on the marker anyway. So, we are going to use up what fuel we have to to get into orbit here, and then any remaining fuel will shift up to these tanks. So that will be perfect. And it looks like we will have a little bit of remaining fuel, but not a lot. That said, we don't have to push this out quite as far as we have in the maneuver node. That's fine. We'll just get into orbit here. And once we are there, then we will determine how much we have left. It won't be a lot. That's completely okay. I'll just push this out a little bit more. There we go. Good enough. And we'll save the 16 meters per second, and we will put this up here where it will be far, far more efficient. Okay, we're going to pin these open, and we're going to open up this guy as well, and we're going to drain this all out. Okay, this is uh, not wanting to go particularly efficiently. Ah, I know why, because I'm a moron. Okay, we'll close this one, and it was going it was trying to go into both of these tanks. The problem. Hmm. We need to move it up to this tank. There's that fuel moved. And then we pin this one open. This one open. It doesn't want to move this fuel. Are we not allowing fuel crossfeed? Maybe. Yes, that was the issue. Okay, so we have removed all of the fuel from this ta these tanks here, and we are going to go ahead and this. Excellent. And now we have about 2,600 meters per second here. The question is, do we want to rendezvous with the ore storage module? Or... Hang on, I'm confused. What is the ore storage module's ultimate orbit here going to look like? Okay, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> I was definitely confused by this. There's no doubt about that one. But we're going to switch back to the fuel tug. We need to figure out if we want to stop at the station first and refuel this thing, like fuel this up to full, and then go grab the ore storage module, or if we want to grab the ore storage module first. So we can go ahead and set the ore storage module as our target here. And hypothetically, what would it look like if we were to, say, attempt to do something along the lines of this? 
have to delay it, but it looks like we could get a pretty decent encounter for 800 meters per second. That's workable. This is definitely workable. Okay, what would this actually be? Separation of 89 kilometers. We can probably tweak that a little bit. Change our inclination a bit like that. Then maybe a little bit of a radial burn as we attempt to fine tune this. Sixty kilometers apart. Okay, about fifty-eight kilometers there. Can't get any closer with a radial or with a normal burn. What about a radial burn? Nope, looks like that's about the best we're gonna get. That's fine. I can live with this. I can absolutely live with this. So we'll go ahead and warp to that. Goodbye, booster. You did your job. So we're going to bring this on over towards that node. It's going to be a minute and a half burn. And we will position it right about there. Excellent. So we want to burn this at T minus 45 seconds, of course. It's going to be a slightly complex burn, so we're not gonna want to just go to any of our any of our node markers. We'll just want to sit right on the maneuver node. And we'll burn this now. Probably could have gotten a little closer if we had fine-tuned the timing of the burn, but this is close enough. Okay, so off we go. And we should have plenty of fuel to make this happen. In theory. In theory. <laughs> I'll be very interested to see what the timing on rendezvousing back up with the moon ends up looking like. That'll be fascinating. So we've got another 500 meters per second left in this burn. Shouldn't be too, too bad. And this will be in about four hours that we will get this rendezvous. Sounds good to me. Let's go ahead and physics warp for right now as we continue this burn. Okay, we're drifting off the node a little bit, so I'm going to fix that and unphysics warp. There we go. 120 more meters per second left in the burn. Make that 50. Take that three. This is probably close enough, right? 84.1 kilometers. Um, let's just burn it a little bit more. Fifty-eight was the closest that we found previously, so fine. It's getting less efficient. We'll just sit at fifty-two. Let's go ahead and warp to here. And we'll switch over to target retrograde. And you can see our needed DV is continually going down here. Excellent. And we'll head on over towards target retrograde. And the question is, when do we begin this burn? Well, this isn't going to be for another 32 minutes, so we're just going to warp into here. Excellent. And we're not actually going to refuel that that tug. I, or we're not going to refuel that, I don't think. We're just going to dock it up here and use this to uh, take it in, is my guess. We'll see. That's currently about three minutes out. Okay. So, how much is a 408 meter per second burn? How long does that take? Sometime around 40 seconds. Okay. So we want to burn this when we are about 40 seconds out. Gotcha. From closest rendezvous point here, or closest intersect. So we'll just warp that in, and we will burn target retrograde at T minus 40 seconds, which will be here in just a little. That'll be great. And we'll burn it... Excellent. I have no idea where the actual tug is, or rather the actual module is, 
We're probably not close enough to see it just yet. That's okay. So our relative speed is shifting here. And that's wonderful. Now we are not necessarily getting closer currently, but that's fine. We have plenty of Delta V to make this happen. Target velocity is almost matched. There we go. We've matched target velocity, and we're going to go ahead and point towards target at this time. There's the target marker. And we're going to burn it right on in. Towards the target at about 5 meters per second, I think is fine. And that gets us an intercept of 3.1 kilometers out over here. That's fine. We'll go ahead and warp to here. And yeah, we are changing our velocity a little bit as we orbit. That is expected. I'm still not sure where the thing is. I have no idea. <laughs> but it is not very far away, I can tell you that. It's only 7 kilometers away right now. Oh, I saw it there. Yes, there it is. Okay, so our point of closest approach is still about 20 minutes out. I'm going to warp forward about 18 minutes. And we will get closer and closer and closer over that time. Three kilometers is good enough for now. We're just going to do a very minute burn as we match planes again. And we have matched speed now. Perfect. Let's go ahead and head towards the target. We need to go out this way. And let's do one more get closer burn. And that should get us close enough. Now, of course, that thing is basically dead in the water right now. It can change its facing, but it cannot change its velocity in any way. So we'll position here and move in at about 2 meters per second, I think. There we go. We'll flip over to retrograde, and that puts us at a very, very similar ascending, or a very, very similar position in about 25 minutes. So we'll finish our rotation to retrograde, and we will warp on in. Excellent. We're not moving in very quickly, and we don't need to. Three minutes, two minutes, one minute. Whoa, 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 whoa. That was me hitting the wrong button. <laughs> okay. And also our SAS is now broken. So I guess we'll have to uh, not time warp. And we'll have to switch to this. Because, yeah, I completely messed that up. I hit the wrong button. I meant to cancel the time warp early. And instead, I went to maximum time warp. Time warp. It was uh, not useful. So we're going to position here, and we're just going to have to burn retrograde here. And we're going to have to burn towards the target and get a little closer again. That was entirely my own fault. Okay. We'll go ahead and warp in manually this time. This is on 100x, and this is 1,000x. Bring it something along the lines of this. And now we will go ahead and kill our velocity, and we'll do one more get closer burn. Can't believe I messed that up. Oh, our SAS is broken again. Why is our SAS broken? Like, why is that happening? I don't even know. Baffling. Well, we will go ahead and switch to the ore storage. There we go. And then we'll switch back, and that will unbreak it. I don't know why it's happening, but sure. Yep, now it's not broken. So we're going to flip over to target retrograde. And we're going to do one final get closer burn here. And this time I'm not going to mess up the time warp. So we will kill our retrograde speed here, our relative speed. There we go. And let's go ahead and turn towards the target.
something along the lines of this. I've overshot. Bringing it back. There we go. And in we go. We're going to move in at about two meters per second. Actually, I'm going to do three here. There we go. We'll flip back to retrograde. I'm going to physics warp here as we flip. Okay. And let's warp to about here. Excellent. And this time I'm not going to mess up the warp. Okay. Wonderful. We're going to continue coming in here. Actually, going to warp ahead a few more seconds. There we go. Okay, let's kill our relative speed. There we go. And we will go ahead and set this docking port as our target. We'll turn around and face towards the target. And then we will set up the docking port on that target. We'll face here. There we go. And we'll turn into here. And it is, I believe, this docking port. We'll control from here. And we will set this docking port as our target. And we will just roll over a little bit here so that we are facing the exact correct direction. We can get rid of this maneuver node. No longer necessary. We'll switch back. And we're going to go in at about one meter per second. There we go. And we will warp a little bit in. Fantastic. Let's get this docked up. We've drifted off of the node a little bit. I'm going to correct our velocity here with the RCS. There we go. Uh, we've drifted off a little bit more there, but I think we're probably good enough. Okay, something like that. I think we should be good here. Should be a perfect dock, or approximately perfect. Eh, we've bounced. I really thought we'd connect there. There we go. <laughs> okay. So we have connected here, and we currently have about... That amount of DV is changing. Okay. So that's a thing. We only have 600 meters per second. I definitely expected more here. However, I don't think we need more necessarily. This gets us an encounter with the moon. That's only 13 meters per second, and that is one heck of an encounter. Okay, we're going to pull that back. That is nice. We'll allow it. We are, however, over time for this episode, so I'm going to go ahead and put a cut in here, and next episode, we're going to bring these guys to the moon. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and I will see you all next time.